Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for My Hero Academia World Heroes Mission. And I really did not like this movie. I had been trying to watch it for a while. It kept coming up just subtitled, and I've been liking the dub, so I was like, hey, I was actually able to find it, and I bought it. I'm like, okay, let's see what I've been waiting for so long. And I didn't like it. It was a waste of time, in my opinion. Its story was simplistic and overly explained. Uh, I think that the action scenes were not well done at all. Uh, pacing and tone consistency just were all over the place. I... I... <laughs> I just was mainly like, oh god, this is like a cash grab movie. This is just like, hey, My Hero Academia is popular. Let's kind of go for it. And they fucking did. Now, I'm... If you like this movie, that's quite alright. I have no qualms against you for that. I always want to try and, like, hit that. But this was not up to par for what I think My Hero Academia can be. Especially with, like, the second movie and the other seasons that's going on. And... It just didn't do the characters well at all. It had a decent enough premise of trying to do something, but then it just was like... It tried to overcomplicate this simple thing of like, just waiting for so long to be like, yes, this is their plan and everything's like, we, are, we already knew this. Why, why do you keep explaining this? There's a lot of it, like... I understand that they do it self-contained enough, but... If you're anywhere, uh, like, familiar with the My Hero Academia franchise, you're just like, what the fuck's kind of going on with this kind of shit? And the thing is, we get introduced pretty much easy enough. We get introduced to Humorize, uh, led by this dude, let's see. Flecked Turn who is more into the Quirk Doomsday Theory, which is kind of similar to the Quirk Singularity Theory, except it's more like that powers will just keep going and going and reach a state where they won't be able to be controlled. And his whole thing is to essentially utilize these bombs to kill off all the people that have quirks. And yes, he has a quirk as well, and there are people working in Humorize that have quirks as well. It is not really dug into very much at all why these people would be going into this kind of stuff. Like, that's the story potential that I think you should dig into with this kind of thing. This does not happen. Um, Flat Turn's whole kind of motivation is saved towards the back half where uh, Midoriya fights him. And it's so simple and quick and done. It's like, um... Why did this take so long to get here? And is this how we're really going to, like, solve this whole kind of thing? It was just like, wow, that's really fucking stupid for all the characters and all the people involved for the plot. So we see that since these bombs are planted throughout the world that we've got everybody going on around the world. However, uh, the World Heroes mission part is really just misleading. Uh, it's mainly just to put heroes in other countries and split up everyone and not have anything for them to really do. It's just like, hey, fan service, you know that character? That's them over there in France. Or USA. Or, like, Egypt or whatnot. And we don't even really get to see how other countries have different laws for heroes, or how their heroes work or operate. It's literally just the barest... Ha! It does no exploration of the world in the World Heroes mission whatsoever. It's like, uh, alright, then you could have just called it something kind of else. Because we mainly focus on Midoriya, Bakugo, and Todoroki. And granted, they are pretty much set up as the kind of big three of their class. But even then, when I say they focus on them, they are given the most screen time. That doesn't mean they get dealt into much at all. 
This is a weird kind of place for them to put it because Midoriya has uh, access to Black Whip, and that's about it. And then he is able also at the end to do 100% full cowling and suffer really not many repercussions for utilizing that whatsoever. Because the only other time he was able to kind of do that was with Aerie using a rewind ability to uh, like heal his damage. They just fucking utilize it. Because they needed a way for Midoriya to beat Flex Turn. Yep. So they're going everywhere. They're trying to like muck around with the bombs. But they go through the humorized stuff. And they don't really see them. And they pretty much spin wheels for a bit. Um, uh... The Endeavor Agency with, of course, Bakugo, Midoriya, and Todoroki are at Athelion? Ah, not Athelion. Otheon. Otheon? Otheon, yes. So, they pretty much then are like, alright. So then, literally, they just are in their hero garb, walking around the, uh, like a city, doing kind of errand kind of shit, and then... We see that this roadie soul dude, who is the other kind of character that we pretty much get linked up with Midoriya for some fucking reason, is this big brother type who takes care of his uh, little siblings by doing crimes and shit. And we get this like extended fucking chase sequence as the three are trying to get him. Midoriya goes after him. Uh, he's got this stuff with jewels, but then this one dude from Humorize is trying to get information to people, but it is so in the background that it's literally like barely even talked about until the plot relevant stuff is, oh, he's got this thing that can disable the bombs. And they had accidentally switched cases, and now Midoriya is now wanted for the murder of 12 people, and I don't know how anybody is like, what? Now, Midoriya going rogue is an interesting kind of concept. Granted, they do tinker with this in the seasons that i would reviewed of him going more vigilante mode and being on his own, and I think that would have been a better kind of story to kind of try for. However, they've already done it in the anime to a better kind of effect. So he essentially has to run around with this dude, and is like, yeah, they're trying to uh, fucking kill us and say that I'm a murderer. He's like, are you a murderer? He's like, nah. And it's like, all right. And they just pretty much go to this other country, but the dude calls the police to try and turn in the case. Like, they won't kill me. And they immediately try and kill him. It's like, what? If there's some shadowy kind of organization, you have to figure out what's kind of going on. And I know he needed to get home to his siblings. But it's just like, all right. And then, of course, Midoriya gets injured uh, trying to save him. And he's like, what the fuck's going on? And gives his whole spiel. Uh, Rhodey wants to be like a pilot and all that kind of stuff. We also learn that his quirk is the little fucking bird thingy, which doesn't really help much except for when it comes in at the end and actually saves the day. But it's just like, all right. I would have rather had them explore more in depth with the quirk, but I, I'd already pretty much lost it at that point. And the thing is, most of the action sequences that we'd had up until this point were just like, what? Like the chase sequence when he was going after Rhodey, we got like completely unnecessary kind of comedic kind of things that were just like, what? And like the bird farting in Midoriya's face, it, I don't mind those jokes, okay? I'm, I'm fine with that kind of humor, except this is just tonal clash and I'm just like, what? It's usually better executed than that in the show and everything like that, like, there's sometimes in certain kind of shows where certain comedy clashes with a serious kind of tone or what you're trying to do or even a kind of chase sequence or action sequence that you're doing and it's just like, that doesn't feel right. Now granted, if it works for you, that's fine. But then we get later into uh, action scenes that it's just, they're just going for pure spectacle. Uh, nobody knows what the fuck this action scene is just, just to look cool and where it's all jerky and like using CGI to whatever kind of effect it's just like, these are not good action scenes. The anime and other movies have had better action scenes than these. Better paced, better plotted, better choreographed. It's just, wow. The only thing I can really say is that it's still got the art style, and that's still top quality, but I'm just like, oh, God. So they pretty much fuck around and get to the border. Uh, Bakugo and Todoroki are able to uh, figure out a coded me message from Midoriya, which is simple as shit. And then they kind of fight some humorized people, like, get taken out by them. 
then they figure out that this dude was working with uh, Rhodey Sol's father who had been abducted because the thing is they were ostracized because their father had supposedly joined Humorize, but he was threatened to do it, otherwise his family would be killed. They worked on a way to disarm the bombs. So these three are the only ones that have it, so they go attack the Humorize kind of base because they're able to figure it out because like, hey, let's check this one out. And Bakugo fights these like weird snaky kind of guys, which really fucking sucks. It's just oh, the worst. Todoroki fights this weird kind of fucker dude, and it's just all right, whatever. And then of course Midoriya then goes out to reflect turn, who's got the ability to reflect things. And the thing is, it's made him completely unable to really connect with anyone, which I wish they had actually dived into more and really explained what was going on because Midoriya is just like you didn't try hard enough. It's like. What? It, like, his simplistic kind of attitude toward this really uh, was a departure from what I've seen in the series of his empathy towards people and how he would be like that even though you weren't able to connect with people uh, physically or whatnot, there could have been other ways that we could have helped you, uh, helped you understand your quirk better, all that kind of stuff. He said, no, -uh, you didn't try hard. And I was like, what the fuck are you even talking about? And then he's just fighting and just... It, it's essentially the worst kind of aspects of Shonen Battle. Where Flecktern is just being able to beat the shit out of him. Before he's like, I'm just going to overpower him with brute strength. And essentially goes 100% and just blasts through his stuff. And I'm like, wow. Uh, you just pretty much just turn it enough so that way he just brute force strengths his way through it. And I'm like... This would have been a really good way to like for him to come up with something, utilize one of his other quirks or whatnot of um, one for all, anything, or even just try to figure out some kind of way to turn him to his side by talking to him and getting him to back down from this. And then Rhodey's able to go down. He's severely wounded and then uh, disarms the bomb with his little quirk bird thingy. God, it was just... Not good. And the thing is, that could have had some really kind of good uh, battle effects and everything going on. But he essentially was in a position that he was like, fuck this shit. I'm, it was kind of like a double Z thing of utilizing the Quirk Doomsday Theory and him being unable to kill himself to essentially try and kill himself and others involved. Like, there's potential there for a good deep examination of certain kind of things and of this quirk based society and everything but it's just hammered of like I'm gonna just thunderously beat the fucking shit out of you and I'm just like that's not Midoriya and that's not how this should be handled this there's a lot of different kind of moving parts in this that you really should take more time and take more seriously to like explore and everything. You just don't throw that shit out there and be like, oh, okay. Because it just sends really kind of confusing messages and everything. It's like, um, yeah, he's what he's doing is wrong, right? Trying to essentially eliminate 80% of the world's population with these kind of bombs. And by the way, we get sporadic kind of check-ins with everybody. It's like, hey, it's just pure fan service. They do nothing... They accomplish nothing. It's just sometimes they find the bombs and they like get them to a certain kind of spot, but it's effectively null zero. It's just like, oh, it's there. Oh, God. It, it really added nothing for me. I'm just like, wow. Okay. We, we, this is what we're doing now. So, They then succeed. Uh, they all get healed. We get a tearful goodbye uh, by Midoriya and Rhodey. Uh, and that's it, which I don't even think they really even deserve that. I think Midoriya would just be like, thanks for everything. And then we see Rhodey pretty much uh, study. He gets an honest job, which is incidentally enough, by the same dude who was giving him the shady fucking criminal contacts to do criminal shit and studying to be a pilot. I don't really care. I got nothing from his character. They did nothing with his character. And that's coming from someone who is an older brother. I should connect with this dude. And I got nothing. It's like, uh-huh. Alright. Yeah. We've done nothing to uh, 
fix the situation of you being ostracized by people being pretty much forced into uh, criminality to survive. Like, that is not examined what's a fucking ever. It's like, hey, we're a good, good society, man, but we're going to ostracize this little fuck and make it so that way the only way you can actually really do something is this. Not even going into the effect of, like, um, would they even still allow him to do anything with piloting or whatnot? Um, trying to examine the effects of being forced into criminality to survive because they pretty much are like, nobody helped them. It's like, oh, your father worked for Humorize. Fuck you, kids. It's like, what? That's, what? Like, there's a lot of things that they should have went instead of just like, oh, action, battle, which can be fine. Like, the John Wick franchise is done on battle and simplicity and action. Okay? This was just dumbing down everything that we had had from the series and to me was just like cash grab kind of thing. Like, I'm glad I didn't go to see this in the theaters. Again, I paid more for it, around like 18 bucks, but... I still find it worth it because of understanding of what this is about. It didn't do a good plot. Now granted, that doesn't mean it needs to be the most complex kind of thing. Alright? Even a simple plot can be good. This is not a... This simple plot is executed poorly. The characters are done poorly. Especially compared to the anime and other movie that I had seen. The action scenes are done poorly because they're just spectacle with no understanding of what's kind of going on. Action scenes tell characters, like character moments, how a character does, what they do, how they react to certain things, do they kill, do they not kill, why, how, throughout all this kind of stuff. You can tell this by it literally being fucking shown to you. It's the point of action scenes. I'm sorry I harp on this, but action scenes People like to call them kind of dumbed down or like action movies that are just all spectacle and mean kind of nothing. But those are when they're not done well or when their goal is to just be like the simplest kind of thing possible of just the spectacle. That's what happens here. It's just like, oh, let's show off really cool stuff that Bakugo and Todoroki can do. And if sometimes, let's throw in some CGI. Like, I didn't... And then... Just having Midoriya go to 100% full cowling with uh, one for all. It's... Especially when we've seen the repercussions of utilizing that power. It's just like, um... Anybody gonna try to explain why he's okay? No? Because literally, uh, we'd seen him utilizing 100% against Shigaraki uh, during the whole... Uh, operation against the Paranormal Liberation Front. And that was pretty much destroying his arms. Here, he had some arm damage, but like not to the extent that it should have been. Like His body should have just been like, broken. And I'm sorry I harp on that, but the thing is, it has been shown that Midoriya has not gotten to a point where his body can handle that shit 100%. And if you're gonna put more and everything into the show, when you do a movie like this, even if it's outside of continuity, you need to explain why we are operating on different rules. That's a case. Why isn't Bakugo fucking farting out cotton candy? Why? Hmm? I mean, we've already got a bird that's farting in Midoriya's face. Just fucking fart out cotton candy, man. We don't need to explain it. I know that's a weird thing to go for, but if you're going for silly fun fucker dude uh, and don't care about the consequences because it's outside of continuity. Go ham. Go nutty. Go do some weird shit. Free yourself with that kind of stuff. That's why certain kind of multiversal things are interesting because you can explore that and see what goes on. Granted, if you can come up with some interesting repercussions for why Baka goes farting cotton candy, go right fucking for it. It's just I'm just trying to go for, like, a weird kind of example. Like, if you had a movie where Bakugo's doing stuff and he just farted out cotton candy. He didn't fucking explain it. She's like, what? What? Uh, 
because it's for a joke. What joke? Why is it funny? What's going on here? Who are you? Who am I? Existentialism. But, I was very disappointed in this movie. Now, if you like it, and you like the action scenes, and you like the characters, that's quite alright. I never want to take that enjoyment from anybody. I just, as a fan of My Hero Academia, uh, I really did not like this. I didn't like it because of how it treated the characters, how it treated the story, and how it treated the action. And honestly, those are the big three things of why I like My Hero Academia. Now granted, even in the show, pacing and execution isn't always the greatest. Like, um, how we're dealing with this kind of final arc that we're getting to, it's a little bit more sped up for what I like. Um, I actually was just able to kind of like pretty much get caught up on the manga and get all that kind of worked out because I wanted to kind of uh, see where we were going and kind of do maybe some comparisons or whatnot. And pacing is definitely that kind of issue. But like those three, like the characters, the story, and the action still work within the realms of what I like in the show and in the manga this just i wouldn't recommend this to anybody even a my hero academia fan which it that's just nutty dude on nutty day for me it i wouldn't recommend it like there are better movies out there there are better things to do with your time go find the manga if you want to go watch another uh, go rewatch a season or whatnot you i I'd go for anything else, but if you like this movie and you want to keep watching it, go for it. Get, get your enjoyment. So, those are my opinions on the movie. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.